In part two of our job series, we send Reese out into the field to interview three experienced geologists within the oil and gas industry in Canada in order to gain some insight on their careers and ask for advice. like a geologist. Hey, can we talk to you for a second? I sat down with Lee, a sedimentary geologist with 24 years experience, Ian, a petroleum geologist and consultant with 24 years experience, and Burns, who is a petroleum geologist and is a professor at Western University. What is your geology training? Um, my education is actually as a paleontologist. I did a paleontology program um, just because I wanted to, not because I was aiming for any particular job. I didn't actually think I was going to be digging dinosaurs in Alberta. I just loved paleontology, so that's what I studied at university. And then near the end of my program, I had to start thinking, well, what am I going to do with this? And uh, I started thinking about the oil and gas industry. I, yeah, I would say when I, when I came to Western to do my graduate work here, I wasn't thinking petroleum at all. Um, I probably wasn't until I was four years into PhD. My training started, uh, of course I went to school forever. Um, but while I was going to do my PhD at Western, I jumped into the oil and gas uh, field by becoming a well site geologist for Pembroke Exploration. What was your first job in geology? My first paid job as a geologist was doing field work for a, a PhD student. Uh, he was a PhD student from Toronto, but he was doing his uh, studies in uh, Utah. So uh, that was my, my first paid job was as a field assistant in the Book Cliffs in Utah. I, I flew myself out to Calgary. I didn't know any better. I was naive enough that I thought, you know, I didn't think oil companies would come to Western to recruit people. So I didn't even think about it. I just scraped together the last few bucks I had and flew myself out to Calgary and lined up some interviews. I was a well site geologist and I chased rigs and it was scary at first but a whole lot of fun when I got a hang of it. <laughs> Lee talks about the value of experience over pay early in your career. Early on when I was a student and just after I graduated um, I was always taking the jobs that paid me the most so I did landscaping and groundskeeping, good jobs that had a good hourly wage so that I could pay for my schooling. I could have taken jobs that were better experience but lower pay. Uh, that's way more important in the long run is to, um, to build up your resume as early as possible, um, get experience that looks good. You gotta come out here, you gotta get your feet wet in the field, you gotta become an operational person. To go and jump into an office and not understand what goes on in the field is tragic. Your learning curve is too steep. Um, you need to understand what goes on during the drilling and completion of wells to understand what you need to know at three o'clock in the morning when you get that phone call as a, as a office geologist saying, okay, here's where we're at. This is what's going on. Here's all the information. If you don't have that background, yeah, oil and gas isn't gonna be for you. The best oil and gas geologists I feel do really well in the field and then they go in the office. Burns puts emphasis on presenting a narrative. How you explain your previous experience helps. What do you think is like probably the best intro job to, to find like a tech and you're a grunt and you can okay. do that kind of so, stuff? What I normally tell students is this, that it ultimately doesn't really matter. Uh, what matters is the narrative. Why do people employ you? To solve their problems. If you can demonstrate you can solve problems, I don't think it really matters if you solve the problem because you were working in a, in a fly camp with OGS at Marshall Lake North of Geraldton, which I did, <laughs> or, or if you did it at the OGS. The, the, the important thing is you look for those opportunities to develop professional behaviors and to have impact and be able to weave that into a story that is compelling. 
Ian states that networking is important and both practical knowledge and mentoring is essential to becoming a successful geologist. With all your degrees, and degrees are great, but you need practical experience, you need mentoring. So you gotta kind of work for companies and get underneath good people. I'd have to say that in my early days, I didn't do that well enough. Today, it's like hitting a home run. I've, I'm with some of the smartest people I've ever met, the nicest people I've ever met. Um, they know what they're doing, they're highly successful. This is where I wish I was 20 years ago. Find someone who's willing to take you on, who's willing to let you do that work and maybe coach you a bit. And uh, that, that looks great on your resume. For example, I worked uh, with a prospector and uh, went out in the field with him in lots of areas between Bancroft and Sudbury. And we did some uh, sampling in the field, uh, brought, brought some samples back. He also taught me how to stake claims the old-fashioned way where you actually chop up a log to make uh, claim posts. Um, so that I could put on my resume, that I had worked with this prospector in, in many different areas over three or four years. What employers are looking for aren't necessarily an encyclopedic understanding of how to run Geoscout. Um, what they tell us they're looking for are people who have good critical thinking abilities, um, people who have uh, good interpersonal uh, abilities, they can work in teams, they know how to do that effectively, they've got good communication skills, uh, they can write. You hear that a lot, students can't write, so work on that. You know, some digital fluency is far more important than I think programs like ours recognize. I mean, if you can walk in and say, yeah, I've worked on this team, that team, this is you know, how I've been able to uh, address conflict in the team, and you know, by the way, I, got my basic coding skills in Python, Java, whatever. Um, those become real power skills. That's what employers are looking for. The rest they can train you on. Subject matter expertise is great, but it's such a small part <laughs> of the big package that, that what's really going to make a difference are those human skills. You never know where your first or next job opportunity will come from. Expand your network, chase experiences, and maybe one day you'll end up working in the field here. Thank you to Lee, Ian, and Burns for providing us with their wisdom as experienced geologists. It's useful to know that gaining relevant experience is important, but also the way you shape your experiences into a compelling narrative is just as crucial into starting your career as a geologist. Thank you for watching today's video. Be sure to comment, like, and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video.